Okay, let's go ahead and get started there, everybody. Welcome back to another uh, Unreal Engine study session. Uh, we're going to be getting back into our um, IO Engine overview uh, portion of the stream. Or, you know, uh, we're going to be getting into the stream where we're going to be studying the Unreal Engine. And we're going to be continuing our topic that we left off last time uh, with the audio engine overview. Uh, we st stopped off at the distance attenuation from last time, and we are going to continue onwards from there. Um, we'll be joined, joined by Blackheart shortly, um, and we're going to go ahead and continue working through all of the topics or, you know, we're the idea is we study the unreal engine figure out as much as we can obviously we're not going to be able to memorize everything about it right at the right at the get-go but you know we might be able to learn you know learn what it's capable of so that when we do uh work on making the clone initially to get a better understanding of it and then you know move on to making an another you know game for ourselves then we'll be able to have a, a decent background on it i'm not saying that we're going to be you know full-on experts on it but you know hopefully enough to be dangerous <laughs> um but um that's that's the plan anyway um now we're, we upload these videos onto YouTube directly, so uh, feel free to check those videos out and give any kind of uh, commentary, um, you know, questions or anything along those lines. Or, you know, if, if you want to answer our questions, uh, give us some commentary or, uh, you know, constructive criticism, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I, I, we all welcome, you know, Blackheart and I welcome that. So, also, go and check out Blackheart's channel as well, Blackheart Games. Um, so, uh, give him uh, some love over there. Um, but I see Blackheart has entered the stage, so let me go ahead and invite him to speak. There we go. Pretty good, pretty good. And I forgot to set my headset audio to be unmuted, but there we go. Fix that. <laughs> so now everybody can hear you. Oh. How, how are you been? Eh, not bad, I guess. You know, all things considered. You know, one day at a time, my friend. One day at a time. Yeah. So, um, how about yourself? How's, how have you been doing? Uh, okay, I guess. Dealing with some really hot day. And then this next, ne these next couple of days are gonna be like, they're gonna be very hot. Understandable. And it's, it's getting pretty cold up here as well, so. But, you know. And, so, and you know, a lot of people, you know, prefer more cold than hot i i tend to be the opposite that's like you know i don't mind hot <laughs> you know for the most part obviously i wouldn't necessarily want to be going out in like 100 degree weather and have the sun beat down on me not necessarily something that i would really want to do um but i prefer cold weathers yeah but i'd rather i'd rather be out in the sun you know or like in the shade or something like that you know you know with hot weather than i would like being out in the snow freezing my ass off <laughs> you know uh you know a lot of people say oh just add more layers well the problem is is that you know you can't really add too many layers onto your hands <laughs> you know it's like you know i, I can't put glove upon glove upon glove of Pawn my hand to keep them warm because then I can't move my fingers. <laughs> so, you know, same for my toes. And... At that point. What's up? You, your hands become the pink, like a penguin. <laughs> Pretty much, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I can't really function very well if if I do that. But 
whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, people enjoy what they like to enjoy. So, yeah. Um, okay, but um, shall we get into our topic? Uh, you you remember where we last left off? If I remember correctly, on audio engine overview, I think it was specialization attenuation. Uh, I cannot pronounce that word. Orthogonally. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I I understand. Um, but uh, actually, we I think we left off on the distance attenuation right above it. So. Really. I think so. Because, uh, you know, we we went through the spiralization sounds, but I don't think uh, we... Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I think, yeah, we did. Yeah, I don't think we... Uh, we finished off with that. I because, think that was what it was, yes. Yeah, we were kind of confused about the HRTF and all that kind of jazz, but we never went on to yeah. the distance, so... So... All right, so uh, let's let's continue on with that, shall we? Yep. All right, so distance-based sound attenuation is also defined as the sound attenuation settings asset. Okay. <laughs> uh, in addition to providing a number of pre-designed functions and shapes for distance-based sound attenuation, sound designers can design their own custom distance attenuation curves. Okay. Um, see sound attenuation for more information. So, uh, again, that's one of those other topics that they're probably going to be talking more about, you know, down at the very bottom. If you look over on the left-hand side of our screen there, you'll probably see, you know, hey, there's sound attenuation. Hey, there's sound cue editor. Hey, there's sound cue reference, which I think every single last one of them have been referenced in some way as another link, but you know, obviously yeah. we'll get to those later, but for now, not much we can do about it, right? Right. Uh, um, uh, and obviously, it, in, in one hand, it's like, okay, great, you know, custom distance attenuation curves. What exactly does that mean? Well, apparently they're going to cover it later, so it's like, Ah, <laughs> you know, I, I would love for them to cover it now, but I, I get it. I understand that, you know, sometimes some of these topics are pretty vast, so they can't really, you know, put it all. I mean, this, this, the audio engine overview is already, you know, super large in its, in its entirety anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we move on. So, spiralization, attenuation, orthogonality. Yeah, that's that's a <laughs> tough word. I I I know, my friend, but um, uh, it's orthogonal. Okay, it's you know, you know, without the it is called orthogonal, orthogonal, and then you have the. Uh, ITY, which is orthogonality. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's a bit it's a bit rough. I understand. So, yeah. um, hey there, tall herbivore feeder one, and I have no idea what that is. So no clue. Can't really uh, provide any context on that, but um. Focusing back on the topic at hand, so, uh, but you know, thank you for coming on into the chat at the very least. So, one subtle aspect of the Unreal Audio spiralization and attenuation features is that they are treated as orthogonal properties. This means sound designers can choose to attenuate a sound by distance or sound listener orientation, independent of spiralization and vice versa. Okay, um, uh, independence. Okay, um, K 
Okay, in this image, when the listener is within the non-specialized specialized radius represented by the green sphere, the sound bleeds to all channels of the speaker configuration. Outside of the radius, the sound is specialized as normal. Hmm. Okay. Um, and what had... I'm guessing it's in the case of, like, if you're outside that, uh, that, that circle, you would hear, you would hear it in uh, one channel, probably, like one speaker, while you, once you walk in there, you hear it on absolutely every last one of them. Well, yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, my, my question is, you know, what does that have to do with the attenuation? It's probably um, distance based. Maybe. Maybe. And what does it have to do with orthogonal properties? That one, I don't know. Yeah. Um... Now, again, they're going to be addressing this a little bit more with the sound attenuation. Um, but I think uh, um, not much, you know, not quite sure what we can really learn more from that. I guess we'll just have to wait until the sound attenuation to maybe learn about what orthogonal properties is all about. Mm. Well, check, th uh, check that up for another, you know, uh, piece of information that they don't really go that far into, but, you know, uh, we move on. Yeah, let's move on. All right. So distance filtering. Another sound attenuation topic, apparently. Sound attenuation settings have also have an option for filtering sounds as a function of distance. Separate curves for low-pass and high-pass filters allow sound designers to emulate the effect of air absorption. Low-pass filter, okay. Or to model uh, frequency-dependent distance attenuation, high-pass filter. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, now this is the first time that they addressed, you know, what low pass filter and high pass filter is kind of all about. Apparently, yeah. Or at least, you know, from, from what I can, from what I've, we've seen so far, it feels like this is yeah. like the first time that they've actually addressed what a low pass filter and high pass filter is all about. So low pass uh, low pass filter is all about air absorption, which is interesting, and then high pass filter is all about uh, distance attenuation, or you know just yeah. distance in general. So, um, so I guess if if for some reason you have I guess. Um, uh, air that's maybe a little bit more um, active, you know, uh, like there's there's more heat in the air, so you know you might be kind of disrupting sound a little bit more, maybe. Then you might have a breakdown of the sound over distance uh, along those lines maybe um or you know maybe the the like the uh air molecules are you know somehow absorbing the sound waves somehow i mean it's it's mechanical so um i'm not quite sure um how that would happen but then again you know like i said you know, we're, we're not necessarily sound engineers so no um yeah. 
how exactly would an air molecule absorb a sound wave? You know, I, you know, not sure about that. <laughs> um, but you know, distance obviously, you know that that I can understand. You know, the the further out you get, you know, you might not necessarily hear you know, a sound, especially if it's a, you know, if the volume level isn't very high for a sound, like, um, like if I turn the TV down to like a, you know, a one volume or something like that, you're not necessarily going to be hearing it in the next room. Unless you have like super sensitive ears, like you can hear from miles or something like that, then like, you know, you might be, you know, like, you know, like dogs, for example, they have really good hearing, um, you know, that kind of thing, you know, or maybe they have a little bit more other features that, you know, allow them to kind of tell, but, but I mean, you know, even, you know, dogs tend to have, you know, good hearing anyway. So typically, um, so but yeah, it's, um, now what's, what's interesting about this is that you could actually have, like, if you were designing a game, uh, where you are having the player have like random, uh, like randomly generated, um, people, you know, in the game, you could set up like like a hearing you know uh process for that particular character like you know hey this person can hear things like you know for miles but you know here's you know but at the same time if there's something that you know is really loud in your ears right there you're gonna go deaf <laughs> you know um you know, like if a firework explodes right next to your ear or something like that, you're going to go deaf because of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I mean, you know, game designer could have fun with that, right? Maybe. In a way. Um, I mean, they did when they made a Alien Isolation. The alien can actually hear. Yep. Yep. Um... And, you know, it was, it was quite interesting when you, ash, you know, when you actually enabled your mic, like, all the time to be active as well. You know, the, the, the hard mode in that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, not a great, not a great uh, thing to do when you're, tr you're, when you're trying to be a streamer and you're like, oh, hey, you know. How's it going there, Blackheart? I see you in the chat. I'm going to die now. Thank you. Goodbye. You know, <laughs> you know the alien's going to go, Oh, hey, I hear you. <laughs> it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and obviously if you're like screaming to the top of your lungs, then they'll hear you even more. You know, <laughs> that would be my, that would be me. <laughs> yeah. So then you're going to alert everybody to your particular location. Um, but I do, you know, I do like how they, they went about doing that. I mean, that, that's a nice feature in a game that is, you know, meant to terrorize you, you know, yep. Um, and obviously it's not an easy feature, you know, to have, you know, to be absolutely quiet, you know, not, not everybody can do that, especially if you're in a tense situation. So like, you know, simple jump scare, you know, you're going, oh my God, you know, kind of thing. And suddenly you say that and, you know, they're going to be like, ooh, target. <laughs> so... Okay, uh, but we move on, shall we? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, we'll we'll get more into that for the sound attenuation. But I like the low pass filter, high pass filter um, description there. I appreciate that. Okay. So, occlusion. 
Uh, Unreal Audio has an extremely inexpensive default async trace that uh, uh, performs occlusion checks for sounds. Uh, the sound attenuation setting has options that allow sound designers to enable occlusion and to set the variety of parameters for filtering sounds based on whether they, they are occluded. Am I saying that right? I don't know. Hold on. I think so, yes. Occlusion. Occlusion, okay, yeah. Um, and... Uh, let's see, let me... Make sure that I have the occluded as well. Or actually, hold on. Um, occlusion. Yeah. yeah, there's the occlusion. And then there's the occluded. Occlude. Yeah, okay. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Just just making sure I'm like on. Yeah, am I saying this correctly? All right. Uh, more advanced occlusion solutions are implemented in third-party plugins utilizing Unreal Audio's occlusion C++ API. Um, okay, so... Um, Here's here's the thing though, um, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I probably should have uh, gone ahead and looked at the definition there. Um, okay, so definition of occlusion is one of them is a process whereby something is hidden or obscured from prominence or view. So, um, that maybe there's something on the way. They say you put a sound behind the wall. Wouldn't the wall be occlu uh, occluding the sound on that particular so side? Well, I think it's it's more along the lines of, hey, you're you want to, in a sense, disable the sound from even going off. You know, you're um, you're you're actively trying to hide it. You know, not not necessarily you're trying to muffle it. You're you're actively trying to hide it from being used. So um, I guess you might say like when you enter a silent room, anything outside would be I guess occluded. For example. I guess. So. Um. That's 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 what I'm kind of leaning towards. Now, I've, obviously, you know, I could be completely off base on that, but um, but it doesn't seem like it. You know, it's you know based off of the definition where it's like something is hidden or obscured, um, then it gives me the idea that you're you're really trying to um like hide the sound altogether now i do see like similar words being shown you know on the search saying blockage obstruction obstructing so i mean i guess you could could maybe include the um the possibility that um occlusion is talking about uh like muffling a sound in a way um, but I don't know if that's exactly what they're kind of going for with this definition. It could be both, you know, in a manner of speaking as well. It could be, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to say, no, oh, definitely not. Um, no, it, it definitely could be, um, the possibility of, uh, 
um, being muffled, but I, I don't know. I, I'm getting more of the, like, completely obscured, you know, you're, you're not hearing it at all versus just being muffled. That's all. That's what I'm kind of getting from it. But I could, and again, I could be wrong. So, um, but shall we move on? Yeah. All right. So, listener-based attenuation. So, sound attenuation settings also have an option that allows sound designers to write volume attenuation, prioritization, scaling, and other effects based on the orientation of the sound relative to the listener. In this way, sounds can become more in focus or out of focus when they come within view of the listener. So, um, hmm. Okay, okay, I, 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 I kind of get what they're trying to go for on that one, you know, the whole, especially the whole in focus and out of focus. So, yeah, um, like for example, when you are, um, like you hear a concert in a park, right? But you're kind of coming up from behind the stage. Um, where, you know, the stage's speakers are kind of facing, you know, out towards the audience, right? So the sound waves aren't necessarily going back, you know, behind the stage very well. You can still kind of hear it a little bit, but it's not, like, in focus. Yeah. So as soon as you go beyond the stage, you know, you go into the audience itself, then that's when the sound becomes in focus and you're able to actually hear you know, the concert in in question in its full glory kind of thing. Whereas if you were behind it, you'd be kind of out of focus. You wouldn't be hearing it as well. So, potentially. Potentially. Yeah. So, unless, of course, it's like, you know, super, super loud and everybody's blowing out their eardrums. But, you know, there's that too. <laughs> You know, suddenly you reach you reach, reach the audience and you see all their ears bleeding for some unknown reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you you reach the audience and you're you're horror struck because you see everybody's ears, you know, have popped and bleeding and stuff like that. That'd be a horrific sight, now, wouldn't it? <laughs> yep. It kind of reminds me of the. Um, in the news recently, there was uh, that one, um, like, dance club or something like that. Someone, like, set up a party for some um, people that do, like, NFTs or Bitcoins or something like that. And the lighting uh, was horribly done so that everybody's... You know, everybody's skin was getting irradiated. Their eyes were getting damaged. It was, it was a mess, <laughs> from what I understand. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, let's just say that a lot of people were not happy afterwards. <laughs> so, but they didn't have anybody like check it beforehand, or you know, have any kind of um, quality control. Yeah in place so you know they they kind of asked for they kind of asked for it and then in yeah. some in some regards on that one so so and obviously the uh the people that actually set up that party is probably going to be paying for like a lot of medical bills afterwards so oh, yeah. maybe i don't know uh, I only heard about it like once from another like news source, but it was like, oh boy, ouch. So, all right, um, distance-based reverb sounds. Okay, Unreal Audio also supports changing how much audio is sent to the master reverb submix as a function of distance. This mapping is defined similarly to the other distance-based parameter curves. Which 
Okay. Um, what exactly do you mean by send? Um, and I don't see it in... They say that's see attenuation reverb send, but I don't see that anywhere in the working with audio section right at this moment in time. Unless they, unless they're kind of addressing like a particular subsection. Um, distance model attenuation topic. Um, yeah, I don't even see that either. So that's weird. I'm not sure what, you know, what that topic is referencing at all. Um, I don't know. And it's not even, it's, I'm not even seeing it on the left hand side either. What the heck is this all about? Oh, it is it's under sound attenuation. Okay. Okay. So that's weird. Um, but the reverb kind of being a, um, being, um, you know, limited by distance as well also makes sense, right? Yeah. So, you know, this, you know, this makes sense, you know, I, I mean, any sound is limited by distance. And so, I mean, reverb should also be limited by that distance as well. So makes sense, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so, I mean, unless, of course, there's nothing, um, nothing getting in the way of it. Like there's, that distance has nothing that would, like, dampen or lessen the sound so like if if something happens on one side of the planet it goes around and uh, goes around the world you know uh full 360 and you know you still hear it you know um at the same volume right like you 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 fire off a gun you know into the air or something like that and you hear the the sound travel you know, uh, sound travel out, and then, you know, <laughs> a long time, you know, probably a long time afterwards, you know, I'm, you know, obviously dependent on distance, you eventually hear the sound go, you know, you hear the gunshot again go off. Um, now, of course, if there's no dampening of it, then I, I feel sorry for that world because that that sound is just going to repeat itself over and over and over again and you're going to be like oh, make it stop you know kind of thing <laughs> right you know like if there's if you if you keep on shooting your gun in the air it's just going to kind of repeat and you're going to keep on hearing that over and over and over again and you're just going to be it'll drive you nuts <laughs> You know, it'd be like, um, you know, I keep on hearing, you know, I keep on seeing people that subject themselves to like, uh, like 10 hour versions of some of the more, um, you know, some like really cute things that might be, you know, fun for like maybe a minute, maybe, but you know, then they have to like suffer for 10 hours of it and they just basically go mad. You know, I, I I think I've seen someone suffer, the, you know, put themselves, um, you know, doing like, I think it was like three hours of the, um, uh, what was that, the uh, Nya Cat or the Rainbow Cat or whatever, uh, you know. Nyan Cat. Yeah. Nyan Cat, yeah. And they they suffered three hours of that, and they were and by the end of that they were like on naked stop, or you know that kind of thing. So you know, so if if there's no if there's no reduction by distance, oh my god, that would be horrifying. Nightmare. Yeah. So 
Okay, uh, gameplay audio API. Unreal Audio has a simple and flexible gameplay API that allows Blueprint and C++ code to customize the behavior of the audio engine. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> really? Honest? Um, but no, I mean, you know, it is good that they have an, an API that you can use to, you know, obviously customize. So that's good. Yeah. I need both Blueprint and C++. Yeah. Uh, for more information, see Sound Sound. And that's not even a link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sound Sound it is. Uh, can someone please point us to what Sound Sound, you know, what, what page Sound Sound is. Um, you know, that, that would be fantastic if you could show us where Sound Sound is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on, uh, play sound and spawn sound blueprints APIs. There's a number of blueprint functions that you can use to play sounds from blueprints. Um, wait, hold on. There's a number of blueprint functions that you can use to play sounds from blueprints. Um, Blueprint function is to play from blueprints. I mean, I think they're talking about that... two different blueprints: the uh, sound blueprint and the game blueprint. I would hope so because that's <laughs> they're basically because repeating correct. themselves there. Yeah, so right after I said and gameplay C++ code, so I'm re I'm guessing that's what they're referring to: game yeah. gameplay blueprint. Yeah. There. I would hope so, because they didn't clarify very, very well on that one. No, but, they did not. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gameplay, C++ code, and two general categories. Two general categories, but yet they list four. <laughs> I. Okay, this first sentence is already fucked up. <laughs> and it's starting to be like Hercules Cedar. Cedar right there. I I, I'll give you two finger. reasons. Two reasons, <laughs> you know, holding up three fingers. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. Okay. Um, play sound functions. This includes play sound at location, play sound 2D, play dialogue 2D, and so on. Okay. Um, so... Obviously, you're just wanting it to, you know, you're using that function to basically say, hey, play the sound at this particular time at this particular location. Gotcha. Uh, spawn sound, uh, spawn sound functions. This includes spawn sound at location, spawn sound 2D, and spawn sound attached. Okay. Um, not quite sure what they mean by attached is all about but I yeah don't know. who knows um well obviously we'll probably experience it that you know as we continue along with our journey on that but or maybe we'll see an example of it at some point in time but um that to me is, seems kind of odd like what would you need to attach to the sound at spawn you know like, or maybe maybe it's something along the lines of like, hey, uh, you spawn in, you hear the like, you know, ta-da kind of sound, and then you your character immediately like goes, hey, I need to reload my gun, you know, kind of thing, right? So maybe that is what they kind of say by attached. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. You know, because that would Hopefully be... Hopefully they cover it at some point. Yeah, because, I mean, that that would seem like it would be something that would, you know, like happen directly after your spawn or something along, the, along those lines. So I can kind of see it if that is indeed what they're referring to on that. You know, I don't really know. But... Okay, so uh, Play Sounds APIs. Be 
These play the indicated sound in a fire and forget mode. Once the sound is playing, you can modify its playback from Blueprint or attach it to objects. This type of playback is useful for simple one-shot types of sounds where you don't need dynamic control. Okay. Um, so... Maybe... Maybe it's like the explosion, for example, in Subnautica, right? Probably. Maybe it's something like, hey, I only need to do this one explosion because you only get to hear it once during a, a regular game and you're done with it. You only need to do it once and it's done. You're not going to repeat it. You're not going to re-listen to it or anything along those lines. Um, you know, that explosion doesn't happen every single day. You're not like going back in time and, you know, replaying that moment every single time either, you know, it just happens once and you're done. You don't need to worry about it anymore. So, yeah. Um, although I don't know why they have it, you know, why they have this particular description after play sound APIs, but mm, whatever, we move on. Um, wait, spawn sound functions, didn't they already cover that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's it's... the second option, and now it's the fourth option. Okay. Just longer. Uh, just longer. Just a longer description. Okay, guys. Um, this is already a pretty messed up paragraph or section altogether. Um, they yeah. really need to redo this, I think. But let's move on. Uh, you can create an audio component to dynamically control parameters on a sound and attach the sound to other actors and control looping sounds. Auto components are useful object in Unreal Engine 4 for sounds and can be used to com uh, for complex interactive blueprint systems for audio. Okay. Um, which I might have gotten that title wrong. Maybe it was might have been describing something else. Maybe. Or maybe it's just something that they probably could have added up to, you know, attached it to that second part. Because it's pretty much the same for the most part, I would imagine. So. Or maybe not, actually. Hold on. Um. Yeah, in in this particular in the particular description, they don't even talk about anything concerning spawn. So exactly. that's why I feel they're describing something else. So they gotten the title wrong. It's possible. It's possible. I you know at this point I don't really know. They're 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 messing up pretty pretty big on this this particular section. Um, yeah. you know. If anybody in the comments or something like that knows what exactly they're trying to actually go for on this particular topic, then please let us know. Obviously, it's I, I don't think, and I'm sure Blackheart doesn't think that it's spawn sound function. So, no, um, it doesn't sound like it's describing a spawn sound. Yeah, it sounds like you know just. You know, and it's some in some ways it almost sounds like it's the play sound APIs, you know. But I don't know. It like I said, this this particular session so far has been pretty um chaotic. So uh most Unreal Engine four audio systems have associated blueprint APIs that allow for customization and control from blueprint. For example, a resource or and submix DSP effect can be modified and controlled from the blueprint. 
as can sound way as sound mixes and sound classes. Okay. That I mean, other than the submix DPS, and that you know, what I got from that is pretty pretty safe straightforward for the most part. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, moving forward, game volume mixing. Uh, game mixing is one of the more challenging aspects of game audio. Unreal Audio provides a number of features for sound designers to use to define and control game mix. There's a wide variety of factors that contribute to an overall volume mix. Indeed. So, so yeah, that. Indeed. <laughs> I'm, I mean, that's topic is pretty much spot on for the most part and I don't have any problems with that whatsoever mm. um, any questions so far nope all right uh, I think I'll cover this next topic and then we'll probably have to close it down afterwards mm. so yeah probably um, so direct volume adjustments Individual assets, such as sound cues and sound waves, have parameters that provide volume control. Audio components also allow sound volume to be modified from Blueprint. The Play Sound and Spawn Sound Audio Gameplay API makes it possible to select volumes at playback. Sound cues can modify sound volumes according to dynamic gameplay parameters, and with other sound cues, graphic, graph logic. Uh, asset volume can also be set via a variety of distance attenuation options, including attenuation via listener orientation. Okay, so overall, this isn't too bad of a description. You know, I mean, it, you know, for direct volume adjustments, obviously, you know, that makes sense, right? Um, you know, you want the audio components you know, to allow sound volume to be modified from the blueprint. Makes sense, right? Um, you know, play sound, spawn sound, API makes it possible to select volumes. Sounds sounds reasonable. Um, asset volume can also be set via a variety of distance attenuation options, including attenuation via listener orientation, which again, that makes sense. But once again, we're, we're dealing with the, you know, sound cues versus sound waves dynamic that they get into again and that one we're not or you know i i don't really know exactly what they're going for on that what about yourself uh, in the dynamics i'm not sure on cues makes me think when the sound is called upon or something that's what Q is making me think on. As for the other one, I'm not sure, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, my my problem with, um, you know, according to this, sound cues can modify sound volumes, aka sound waves, according to dynamic gameplay parameters. So. So it's not sound. It's not that sound cues are something that is, you know, replaying the sound waves in its entirety without any kind of, you know, um, it's just like you know, sound cues are just like you know, playing that sound and that's it. No, it feels as though sound cues does something to that sound wave to change it in some fashion or another with that whole dynamic gameplay parameters. What like I don't. It could, be real, it could be related to the position of the listener. Is there anything along in the way? Is it where the where is the sound actually coming from? What's around that sound? That it's the cue saying, okay, this is how it's gonna sound based on these parameters. I I don't know if it's anything along the lines of like listener orientation kind of thing. I I feel like it's it's something like. Um, like you're inside a very large hall, for example, that has echo in it, right? 
Um, but outside, obviously, you wouldn't necessarily have the echo. Um, so uh, outside, you would hear like a sound, like say, you know, a gunshot, right? Gunshot outside. That sound would, you know, travel, you know, distances around it. You know, even coming inside the building with the echo. But once it enters said building, then you add, you have to like maybe add that echo to that gunshot. If you get what I'm saying. I guess so. Yes. I I wonder if that's something that is what sound cues are all about. It's not. It's not like it's you are playing the sound outright it's something where it's like you're you're needing to kind of change that sound in some way you know however you want it it it, it to be changed and you have to change it in some fashion or another like change the pitch change the length you know echo it reverb it who knows right um Maybe you need to you you need to just kind of modify it in some way where it's, um, you know, it's not its original sound anymore. It, well, I mean it, it is, but it's been changed. It's been modified into something else. Yeah, it was put through some kind of filter. Or something, you know. Um, that's the only thing that I can kind of think of about it. Um, but again, I'm, I might be reaching on this, so I don't really know. And don't even get me started on the whole graph logic. No idea what they're referring to on that one. I don't know what it's referring to either. Yeah, so, um, So it's the only thing that I can maybe think about. I don't know if I don't know if that's true. I don't know if my hypothesis is true on that one. So um but that's going to be that's that's going to have to be it, my friend, unless you want to stick around a little bit longer, but I would imagine that you want to get some food in you. Yeah. So I'm going to go get some food. Yeah. Yeah. So um so that's going to be it for our unreal study session again you know we still got a ways to go for this audio engine overview yeah you know sound classes sound mixes i mean geez there's a lot here we might have to do like two more days of this no actually no not really some of these looks pretty short yeah we might be able to get through it. Or if anything, we could probably try to push through tomorrow. Yeah. Or not tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's your day off. Uh, Wednesday. Yeah. So, you know, and, and maybe finish it all off. So maybe on Wednesday, be prepared for potentially a longer Unreal, maybe? Maybe. Like, like if we get to, like, debugging and prof uh, profiling as, like, the last one... And we're like already at three o'clock. Then we might want to push through a little bit more to finish it off. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But obviously, if we're like, if we have like, if we're up at like the DSP effects and processing, for example, then we might want to like maybe, you know, pause that for the next time or something like that. I don't know. But you know, just. Just, you know, talking out loud, you know. So. Yeah. All right, then. Um, well, that's going to be it for our Unreal study se uh, session here. So, um, you know, a lot more audio to come. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, hey. A lot to cover. But, you know, every, every little bit is going to help us, you know, with... You know making the game you know later you know um you know because we don't know exactly what may, you know we might not necessarily face off against it like you know on our first first clone but we might need that information 
um, when we start trying to make our first game. So, um, so it's good to kind of have this information early, you know. Not to say that you know we're gonna necessarily remember all of it, but <laughs> but at least we'll be able to try to do what we can uh, with what we have. So, and I, obviously I wouldn't want to kind of go rushing into making a a clone anyway without learning a little bit of what Unreal Engine can do. So. Otherwise, we're going to be going into the clone, you know, trying to make the clone, and we're going to be, like, uh, scrambling all over the place going, what are we doing here? You know, how are we doing, you know, how are we going about doing this? You know, so better to have a basic understanding at the very least. Yeah. So. I mean, unless you want to, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> you know. If you if you want to like rush into, you know the fir our first clone and just kind of like go hey we're just gonna, um, you know mess around with um, mess around with this and we're probably gonna make it really ugly but, I mean we could wow. do that but, you know we're probably gonna be messing up a lot. So. Yeah. There's still other stuff aside from audio that we still don't know about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I only picked audio first because it, you know, we probably weren't going to be using it, you know, too much. Uh, well, I mean, we will, we will be using a lot of audio. I mean, let's face it, there's, you know, music, sound effects and stuff like that that we're going to need to worry about, right? Um, but, Obviously, we're not going to be like, you know, really like nitpicking every single last little detail about, you know, oh my God, you know, our our sound mixer isn't set at the right kind of parameter. We need to have it like, you know, slightly higher on this one particular level to get the 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 perfect sound or something like that. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah. Alright, my friend. I'll I'll catch you next time. Um. Uh, well, I'll obviously you know we got no, Troy. No. We got Troy later on tonight. So. Yep. Uh, got that coming up. Um. So for those of you watching these videos, you know, uh, you know, stick around for our later streams. You know, or you know, stick stick around on my stream as I will be continuing. Uh, up through to Terraria. Um, or if you're watching this video, you know, on our YouTube channels, you know, Blackheart and Mine channels, then, um, you know, hopefully you enjoyed it. You know, leave a like and subscribe. Uh, comment. You know, help us out. Yeah. Um, check our descriptions. Uh, anything else there, Blackheart? Am I forgetting something? Uh, no, I think you're good. I already did my whole sellout speech at the beginning, so... <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, you know... Uh, but you always want to kind of do something at the very end to, to kind of reinforce. Or at least, you know, in my opinion. So... Um, but yeah, um, I think that's about it. So, um, yeah, I'm up to I'm up to get some food. All right, man. You take care. I'll yeah. uh, catch you next time. See you in a little bit. All right, bye. Bye. All right, and that's where we're gonna go ahead and end this video. So again, thank you all for stopping on by and um listening to us talk about the Unreal Engine. Um, so, uh, obviously, you know, we are always welcoming for anybody that wants to kind of help us along with our Unreal journey. Um, if there's like a concept that we're not really understanding very well, then please feel free to um, address it. 
you know, um, you know, because obviously there's points where we're like on, uh, what's going on here again? Um, so we welcome anybody that can help us answer those questions. Uh, but that's going to be it for our, uh, for this topic. I'm going to be switching on over to the uh, upload session uh, for the next hour. And then um, we're going to be getting into Troy later. So uh, if any of that interests you, uh, you're watching this, you know, on YouTube as its own separate video, then feel free to check out the other playlists that we got. Um, you know, go check out Blackheart's channel. Uh, give them some support. And um, that's going to be it. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully I catch you next time. Until then, take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll catch you strangers next time.